Hey guys, here's truly Kevin Grace reporting to you from Los Angeles, California. I'm at Angelos Cemetery, which used to be called uh, Rosedale Cemetery up until about 1993, until the Angelos family brought the cemetery. There is a major star that is buried here, kind of neglected. And if you didn't pay attention, you would walk past her her headstone, which I did looking for her grave, which is right near the entrance. This young lady was the first black American to win an Academy Award. In 1939, she won Best Supporting Actress in Gone with the Wind. She also was the first black woman to sing on uh, American radio in 1931. And um, she really wanted to be buried at Hollywood forever, but due to the racism here in Los Angeles. Uh, at that time, she was not able to be buried there when she died in, uh, in 1952. But her family did put a marker there, um, a memorial there several years ago with her name on it. But uh, she is buried here. The young lady I'm talking about is Patty McDaniels. She was criticized uh, for actually playing some of the roles that she did due to, again, stereotypes and racism. She could only get some of the parts of being a maid and the NAACP uh, criticized her for uh, reinforcing some of those stereotypes, but that's all that was allowed to do. And she um, said many times, I'd rather play a maid for $700 than be a maid for $7. But she did bring dignity and respects to those roles that she portrayed. And even for Gone with the Wind, she was not allowed <clears throat> to um, go to the Atlanta premiere. And when she did win the Academy Award in 1939, she uh, and her husband had to be uh, seated uh, in the back of the um, hotel where they had the award ceremony. So um, they knew that she was going to win. It was a lot different than uh, people knew the results of who were going to win uh, at that time but um, again it's it's sad to see um, how things were at the time she di did die uh, of breast cancer and there was over uh, 57,000 mourners that came and 125 lemos accompanied her body here and um, uh, also uh, interesting fact uh, in 1945 she was part of a class action suit against housing discrimination here in Los Angeles that went to the Supreme Court but as I said I wanted to meet her for a long time and um, uh, give her some flowers here she's definitely one of my favorites and uh, if you ever do come here to the cemetery it's off of Washington Boulevard and the entrance is right right here so it's not far to find from the guard shack but if you ever here in Los Angeles California come out and see a legend a Hollywood legend Hattie McDaniels the first black American to win an Academy Award Hey guys, this is yours truly, Kevin Grace. I'm reporting to you from Hollywood, California. I'm actually on Santa Monica Boulevard at a cemetery called Hollywood Forever. It's a beautiful cemetery. It's uh, it's old, and um, behind me is an actress that I admired. She was actually the first black actress to win a supporting um, actress nomination um, Academy Award for her work in Gone with the Wind. Her name is Hattie McDaniels. She wanted to be buried here, but unfortunately Hollywood, believe it or not, California, yes, it was segregated until the late um, 50s when they repealed that type of law. But she died in 1959 from, I believe it was uh, breast cancer. So um, she's buried at another cemetery, but her family several years ago put a little plaque monument right here that has her name on it and it says to honor her last wishes Hattie McDaniels 1895 to 1952 renowned performer Academy Award 1939 gone with the wind and Hattie you are credit to your craft your race and to your family dedicated in 19 
99, but this is a little monument for her since she could not be buried here at the um, time where there was segregation. Um, but yeah, she died in 1953, so I think later in the 50s is when they repealed the situation of um, having cemeteries segregated. But if you ever here in Hollywood, California, come pay your respects, and actually I'll take you the next time to where she's buried. Walter White made a list of excessively anti-Negro pictures. At the top of his list were three of Hattie McDaniel's films, The Little Colonel, Maryland, and Gone with the Wind. He called his wartime campaign anti mammyism and went after Hattie personally for playing one. That she herself would be so singled out for attack by Walter White, the NAACP, I'm sure she found very dismaying. She had to. Here, this role was the pinnacle of her career, and here people saying, you Tom, you, how could you do this? Her response was, look, you have to look at this thing realistically. These are the kind of roles that are being given to us now. As Hattie said herself, when people asked her why she kept playing maids, she said, well, what did you expect me to play? You expect me to play Red, a Red Butler's wife? And let's be realistic. She was restricted by time, and she did the best she could. It was just one of those things, just one of those crazy things, one of those bells. White offered Hollywood a more acceptable alternative to Hattie as the star, Lena Horne. It was just one of those nights. Just his ideal, his model was someone like Lena Horne. I mean, that's the person he really was backing. Someone who, you know, ap absolutely opposite of Hattie McDaniel. Glamorous, beautiful woman um, who could be a sex symbol. Audiences were ready for a new kind of black woman to emerge. So that's why they promoted Lena Horne, and to some extent, that's why it was deliberately uh, stipulated in her contract that she would not appear on the screen as a maid. Soon, parts for Lena Horne increased and diminished for Hattie. Hattie took the few parts she could get, all of them mammies or maids. Her battle with Walter White got uglier. White said he was disgusted at the sheer selfishness of actors like Hattie, who just wanted to save their jobs without regard for the future of Negroes as a whole. Hattie said that White was only one-eighth black anyway, and he was not qualified to speak for the race. Roles for Hattie disappeared. She wasn't getting work as much as anymore. She wrote a California senator that I have spent all my life in the entertainment business. I have entertained our troops. I've raised money for U.S. war bonds. I've tried to make a contribution to my country and to my people, and yet I can't get work. Could you please speak to someone for me? Hattie McDaniel, in effect, had a 20-year career, divided almost in half in that in the 30s she was honored and condemned, but more honored. After that, she often, in playing the same role, was condemned only. And I think those two Hatties defines a, what I think of as a tragic life, a woman who did her best throughout but was admired for half her career, condemned for the other half, the two Hatties. Hattie got little support from her husband. As she got fewer parts, Lloyd refused to help out financially. Hattie said, he thought because he married me, he shouldn't have to work. So Hattie divorced him, and she fell into a deep depression. The most dramatic manifestations of her depression were her depressed mood, obviously, her gradual withdrawal from life and from people. In her biography, there are reports that she might have uh, attempted suicide on an occasion. So I think that was the professional decline compounded by some of the personal problems and disaster that she endured.
But even as Hattie's personal and professional life hit rock bottom, an unexpected challenge forced her back into the public eye, a battle against segregated housing. For decades, blacks, regardless of income or social standing, had been prohibited from living in certain communities because of their race. So-called restrictive covenants were passed from one owner to the next to keep the neighborhoods all white. In 1945, a group of white property owners tried to remove Hattie and her black neighbors from their homes. Hattie was outraged, so she organized her neighbors and launched a fight to abolish these restrictions. The issue eventually reached the Supreme Court where the covenants were struck down. Hattie's victory put an end to legal housing discrimination in Los Angeles. Then, in 1947, Procter & Gamble opened a search to replace the lead for their radio comedy, The Beulah Show. Now, for years, the voice of Beulah, a black housekeeper, had been played by a white male. But, for the first time, the producers decided to hire a black woman instead. Hattie had reservations about playing yet another maid. But what could she do? It was that or nothing. So. Hattie took charge. She insisted on editorial control. She refused to speak in what they thought was a Negro dialect, and her salary was a whopping $2,000 a week, twice what she earned on Gone with the Wind. Hattie had never been so popular as she was as Beulah, not even in the movies. She received hundreds of adoring fan letters. The Beulah show ran for three years on CBS radio. In 1950, The Beulah Show made the transition to television easily. Don't let nobody tell you that I'm in the market for a husband. Of course I would be, but they don't sell husbands in the market. But at the height of her popularity, after filming only one episode, Hattie became ill. She was diagnosed with breast cancer. She spent the next year in and out of the hospital, and in the spring of 1952, she had to give up Beulah but her desire to perform would stay with her until the very end of her life. An old vaudeville friend, Ed Wynn, had one of the most popular shows at the time, and he asked Hattie to appear as Beulah. It would be her last performance. This is an invention to do away with mice. Uh -huh. This is a new mouse trap. Yeah. Show you what it is. It's a little mouse television set. That's a nice invention, but there ain't no mice around our house. I run them all over with my singing. Can you sing, Beulah? I didn't know that. Can I sing? Yeah. Well, go ahead, go ahead. Well, okay. with apologies to Miss Sophie Tucker, some of these days hit it, Professor. Some of these days, you're gonna miss me, honey. Some of these days, I think for many Americans, the one thing that they identified with her is this rebellious spirit that she had and that she embodied, because there were moments when she spoke when others could not speak, and there were spaces that she was allowed to occupy that others were not allowed to occupy. Her legacy has been an acting legacy, a humanistic legacy, and she did everything possible to make life more bearable and more creative for the generation who succeeded her. I don't think she ever, ever received the recognition. And of all the people out there acting, I cannot lie, she was my favorite. She was marvelous. She was a star. Even at the end of her career, despite the fact that some people might regard her as a tragic figure, really Hattie McDaniel is having the last laugh because we still have her performance as a testament to her brilliance and talent as an actress and to her star power uh, in this particular time period. On October 26, 1952, Hattie McDaniel died. On the day of her funeral, after the service, 
the procession of cars from the church to the cemetery was one of the largest Los Angeles has ever seen. Before Hattie died, she willed her Oscar to Howard University, a historically black college in Washington, D.C. During the student protests of the 1960s, the statue disappeared and was never found. Was the statue deliberately removed as a final protest against Hattie and what she came to represent? Or was it an innocent casualty of the turbulent times? No one knows for sure, but much like the missing Oscar, the legacy of this groundbreaking actor was also lost. Her incredible accomplishments all but forgotten. But Hattie McDaniel deserves to be remembered. She spent the better part of her life pursuing her dreams of being an actor. She persevered in the face of overwhelming obstacles. This took courage, determination, and it took talent. And by and large, she succeeded in a way no other black actor had ever done before. Before she died, even her critics finally acknowledged her achievements and praised her for being an outstanding actor and a credit to her race. She was also a credit to the movies and to an industry that she loved. Hattie always said simply that this is exactly how she'd like to be remembered. Hattie McDaniel, actor, film pioneer, star, a credit to her race.